All right, so I think I discussed this this uh, app, and if I didn't, my apologies, but the RX 1200, it's a 12-bit sampler, kind of like the SP 1200. It's what it's kind of modeled after, but yet it doesn't really do, it's not, like I hear people saying it's supposed to do exactly, oh, it should, it's a 12-bit sampler, it's digital, it is what it is. It doesn't, I don't think it's, and they, I think in their video, if I'm not mistaken, they do say it does, it's not exactly the SP-1200, okay? They just model a lot of the stuff after it. Um, there's a lot of features on here. I don't want to go over every feature. They have, I want to say it's 55 presets, and in each preset, some have only eight, some have 32, but it goes up to 32. There's four banks of eight, right? You can see right here, you can switch your banks. You got tune, decay, mix on here, and you have your left, right pans that you can do. And then you have ability to load. You can um, use the channel and switch it to like mono, left to right. You can do, they have a couple filters on there. This is if you want to slow something down or speed something up. So they make it like a record, like 33 RPM. You have a fine tune and then you have gain. And the gain, while it does increase the, the volume of a sample, the design of it is supposed to be to distort more or less. So it's making it more distorted. The out is the coolest part, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. It's not the coolest, but it's one of my favorite things. So you have outs on here, and I can't remember how many. Oh, it's eight. Yeah. So you have eight outs. So just like a multi, um, multi-track multi out, that's basically what this thing does. So you could do up to eight. So let's say you got three hats. You could put all your hats on one channel and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So right now I just have eight and I have, a, um, let me turn it on so you can hear it. That might help. So there's a kick. This is the uh, DAF time. This is in stereo. You can make the, I prefer it in mono. I don't know why I do, but I do. Um, Claps. So they have these samples in there that you can use. I probably would never use those, um, but I do like the drums in here mostly. And if I put sample, you, oh, and by the way, you can drag and drop a sample in just so you can see it. Cause I know some people always wondering about that. I'm just trying to find a sample that's just something not too long, but everything I have, I think is pretty. Um, let's see if there's a sample in here. Okay, this is really long. And let's just find something shorter. Okay, here's a bass sample. Let's just drag it in. So all you do is drag it and drop it. Now it's in here. Probably want to bring it down in the mix. Turn that gain down so it don't distort it so much. Oh, sorry about that beeping. That's, I think that's Discord doing that. Let me turn that off. trying to increase the gain so it don't blast you. So you, you can drop a sample and now in times past, I think, I'm not sure because I didn't own original SP and I'm not sitting here trying to act like I did, but um, I don't know. I know you couldn't, you couldn't go in a screen and edit it the way that you can on here. So this red button is obviously the edit button. And you can pick whichever pad you want. So here's the bass. So let's say I only want it really this one bass note. It's right here. Kind of like what we do, in, what you've seen me do in Koala and stuff like that. So you can pick that one bass. Now, what I would like to see, there are loop modes. So you have like, and it'll just keep playing it. Then there's and then you have one shot. 
Um, what I would like to see, and I mean, this is not on, and was never on the, the original, obviously, but this is something. Oh, and you can, by the way, you can look at one or you can look at all of your sample banks. So wherever you have them. So in this little side panel, that's kind of cool. Um, I would love to see, and then you have, if you drop the menu down, your actions are to normalize, truncate. So like, let's truncate that. So now we just have that sample. Um, you can reverse, revert the sample back, I guess, or clear the pad. So we'll, and it's popping in there because it's not on the zero crossing. I think, let me see if I can, that's a little bit better, not 100%, but anyway, so you get the point. Uh, why is this popping up? All kinds of stuff just popping up in the middle of it. Okay, sorry about that. So, cool. That There's that. So you can go in and, and tweak the sample by doing that. What I would like to see, what I was going to say, and I kept jumping into something else, was the ability, if I click on this, to play it um, across the keys. So spread the sound across the keys. And right now... I don't see, and I know that wasn't probably something in the original, but I don't see where that's at. So I know you can play, you can play, um, hold on. I guess I need to. I'm using the keyboard and I can play the samples. So if I. So you can drum it in, do your thing. And then they have a velocity response here, which is at 18%, which is kind of cool. Um, but I would love them to, yeah, allow me to spread the sample across the keys, especially being that it's not gonna, it's not in a machine. Um, so we're not, we shouldn't have that limitation and it's using a DAW. Otherwise it feels like it's more for like simple one shot samples. That's pretty much all you're getting which may be what they want it to be. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so you have that kind of stuff. You can adjust the tune of something or the decay. Right. I'll just leave it where it's at. Okay, and then switch back if you want to do decay, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's talk about this multi-sample, which was the reason why I wanted to do this video in the first place. But first of all, the settings, excuse me, but they have them split where the banks will skip the B. So the B, they only play eight notes, in other words, not the B, I'm sorry. What am I saying? It goes one through eight, right, across the keys, and then it skips. And then you pick up the next one through eight at the next octave. To me, if you're playing on the computer, keyboard, or anything like a 25 key, that ain't going to work. So... You got to use the most space for all your keys. So the linear view is an option, which is really cool that they gave that MIDI keyboard layout. They do have shortcuts. I turned mine off because what I found is that I'd be trying to play on the key bed here. Now, if I had a keyboard, that would be fine. But because I'm... Because I'm playing on, on the actual keyboard on my computer, uh, it changes the dynamics of it. So anyway, there you have it on that. Uh, it does say here channel po uh, polyphony. So that may be the answer. And I just don't know it yet. Like, let's see if I turn it up to eight. Well, I would think that that, that would allow me to play eight. Like, I guess that means like if you need to play a chord on it. But I'm not sure... Um, if it plays only if you have a keyboard plugged in, like an actual keyboard, it'll recognize that. I'm not sure, but it doesn't, it definitely doesn't do it on the, um, right now with the, where I have it right now. So I'll try that later once I get my other keyboard in. All right, let's go back to where I was talking about. I've been running all over the place. Apologies for that in advance. All right. I do love how it shows you the sample name. Got that old screen, which is kind of cool, the green screen. I like how it shows you the sample name. I like how it um, shows you 
the speed, which I think shouldn't be that fast. <laughs> feel like it should be this maybe so you can speed or slow down the sample this should be a mono too not okay cool all right so all right back to what we were talking about so the out so what is cool about that is i know in ableton um the mixer and the things the way it's set up it's generally set up for you to make it easier for you to do your multi-out stuff. Well, in Koala, uh, I mean Koala, in um, <laughs> Ableton is not. So you're gonna have to set it up yourself. So the way I found is I'll make one track, I put drums on here, just as an example, and I recorded in some drums using these, right? Just those three. And you can put it on a track and record your drum in like in the same track, which is neat. And then you make three audio tracks. So now this is your MIDI, obviously. And if you want all MIDI, then you're gonna have to use the inbuilt to separate the sounds on MIDI. It's not, gonna re as far as I know, it's not recording MIDI. I could try that though. Let me just try it real quick. Let's insert a MIDI track. I'm gonna leave it blue for the sake of being able to see what it is. And then let's see if we can go from drums. Yeah, see, they don't offer the aux the outs on MIDI. So you would have to, but that's fine because MIDI is so much easier to um, move stuff around. You don't really need that. Um, you would just, you know, copy the MIDI tracks and then go in or you can, you know, um, and this would be the way that I would explode them, right? They saw exploding drums. Just make three copies of it. And because you can select parts, I think if you go shift, you can select multiple parts by holding shift on your keyboard, and then just delete out the parts you don't want. Okay, make it simple. All right, so what I wanna do is go to the tab, because I have a drum, you see this long thing down here, it's a, it's a drum break rack. So I'm gonna turn the drum break rack up on this one, and we'll, I'll let you hear what it sounds like. We'll put the loop on. So you don't need that with this machine. By the way, I'm just, I was just testing it out. You don't really need it. Um, the the stuff in here, so I'm just gonna use the stuff built in because assuming that, you know, not everybody's using Ableton. So some people using Logic, some people using FL Studio, whatever you may be using. It works on any, either one, so it's fine. So after you record your drums in, then you wanna make sure this is set up. Now in Ableton, you have to set it to either in or audio, auto. I do auto just because it's easier for me. Um, but you click on the track that you want to record in from. And once you put it at drums, so you see I have it, I went down here and picked drums. Then here you'll see the drop down menu now gives you eight RX 1200 output slots. And based on where that spot is, so in, for instance, in the RX 1200, you'll see up here on the kick, it's on the one, snare is on the two, the hat's on the three. So they put them in order based on this, right? And if you go to, I think B, it's, does it start back over one? They put that on four. So I don't understand the routing on these and I'm not gonna to try to figure it out. Um, there may be a reason for why they did that, um, but you can change it. It's not a big deal, right? All right, so back to where we are. So we already got our setup one through eight, but we're only using three. So I have three audio tracks. You have to set up three. Now, again, if you're in a different DAW, it may be a little different. I can't explain that to you because I don't have all the DAW. I have Logic, but I don't have all of them. So in here, I hold down command and I can turn on record on those three and I can just record them out, right? Kind of like if you had a um, SP or MPC 
Well, the SP you would only be recording out. I think you can only record out the the left right. I'm pretty sure. Um, but with the like NPCs, especially if you have like a live two, I want to say, and the X, any of those older ones, I think you can record at least four. Four monos out. Is it four monos out? Or is it two stereo? I think, well, whatever the case may be, you can record out. That's all we're doing. But what's cool about this is having those outputs, you can record them at the same time. So watch, I'm going to record, press record. It's going to record these four bars um, over these tracks, and it's going to separate the tracks for you. So watch. So you can see the meters are jumping here at different levels because it's different parts. All right, I always let it go around a little bit. Hit Command Z, it will undo that last part. And now you have your tracks perfectly. So you can mute this and you have your track separated. And then audio. See, there's the kicks, snares. And the hats. And I obviously labeled each one of these to be this. Um, so you need to label your stuff if that's what you want to do. If you label in Ableton before you record, it will record and use that name of whatever this track is. So just you only have to label here initially to do that. Okay. And that's it. I'm going to be, I've been using this in my songs lately and I like it a lot. Some people hate the 12 bit stuff. But for me, um, I, I honestly just like it. I, I think it gives some more texture to the track. And I find myself using less plugins. Not that certain plugins are bad, but I think before I would try to use a Flavor Pro, Pro I was trying to use um, Excite Audio's uh, console and different ones just to get emulate this sound. Another good one, though, if you don't have the money to spend for 30, I think it's $29 for this plugin. If you don't have the $29, although this plugin that I'm about to show you costs about, I think, 40 but you can use the free version of it um, to get the sounds, is uh, Tone Boosters. So go to Plugins. Tone Boosters, especially on desktop, on iOS, I can't remember how much it costs, but you'll have to buy it. It's not free on iOS. But on here, they let you use all their plugins for free in demo mode, and demo mode has no expiration. So that's crazy good, right? So for so what I did was, because I don't use them all technically, I pretty much use uh, Barricade. I bought the one that I know I for sure was going to use to support the um, developer, which I think is a good thing to do. Um, I'm actually going to delete this right here. I don't need that right there. Uh, let's see, Bit Juggler. That's what I was going to show you. So with Bit Juggler... I'm just going to throw it on here. You'll see. Did I buy? I bought Bit Juggler too because I'm not in demo mode. I did buy this one because I use it. You can build your own. And I'll show you kind of what I did here. I built like a PO sample. I found, I figured out what the sample rate is. Somebody told me. So don't ask. I was about to say, don't ask me how I figured it out because so I didn't really figure it out. Somebody told me. But if you see, if you load it, I have it at 8 bit, 2300 or 20. Uh, 3000 hertz right there. So what's cool in here is this vintage sampler is actually the 12 bit 32, which is I think what the SP 1200 is. They modeled this after the SP 1200. So it's kind of already there for you under there. I'm not saying this to not say get the, uh, the um, to get the uh, RX 1200, RX 1200. Is going to be better in the sense that you got more features, more things. The the tone uh, bit juggler is just if you want the twelve bit rate or the twelve bit rate with the um, twenty three hundred sample rate. Twelve bit, they have twenty three hundred sample rate. I think I said that right. So they're both quality plugins, um, but I'm just saying this is for those that can't afford the the SP, but they want to get that sound. But if you can afford it, by all means, grab that RX uh, 1200. I think it's really worthy. The simple fact that you can edit a sound in here makes it even better. 
and more worth it. And the fact that they have literally, I think it's 55 presets of drums and samples and things that you can use. So that's cool. So you're almost like, I mean, you think about if you bought a nice um, sound pack from somebody, you might spend 20, 30 bucks for it. Unless you don't like, and even if you go on um, Splice, you're only going to get so many samples. But this is cool because not only do you get the samples, but you can bring your own in and use their all these features with your samples and really give it some, uh, really use it in a me more meaningful way than just having a sample pack. But the fact that they give it, I think is cool. And uh, yeah, so that's it in Phonic. They do have um, an R, I think it's called the RX950, which is just a rack that can kind of give you that sound, that, uh, that sound the RX9, the RX950. Uh, it pretty much looks like, let me pull it up for you. Looks like this. Okay, and this is on iOS, the RX950. It's the classic ADDA converter. You got your input, the audio bandwidth, the filter, and you can turn it mono. If you click on this little piece here, a lot of people don't know you can scale this thing back. So it's not so big, right? Then you have the brilliance on the back. And that's, that's it. So there you go. And they have some, and when you buy these, they have like a little manual, a little manual that you can download on their website. And it gives you some preset ideas for that too. I used to use that one all the time on iOS. Um, but I, I, I definitely say this RX 1200 has been a worthy purchase. And again, it's like, I think it's $29. They didn't give me this by any means. I'm, I'm, nothing has been given to me as far as anything I, you see on this channel. It's all me buying it. Um, some stuff I keep, some stuff I don't, but I definitely bought it with my own money. So there you go. So grab that plugin if you like that style and want that uh, kind of a 12-bit um, sampler uh, sound. And uh, yeah, hopefully you gleam something from here. I'm a little tired this morning. So pardon my um, just kind of lazy sounding voice. But yeah, I'm just, I'm a little tired. So, um, and my uh, sinus is bothering me too. So what do you know? It's part of it. All right. So I'm out. Hopefully I helped you. If you got any questions, you can drop them in the comments below and I'll answer them. All right. I'm out.